It's like baby shark. Hi everyone, how's it going? I'm super excited about today's video. It's one I've wanted to record for a very long time. We're gonna talk about ingress controllers, how to use them as a proxy, uh, setting up the load balancer configuration, even including DNS, A records, certificate managers, cluster issuers, and then using that in an actual deployment. And we're gonna do it all in 17 minutes. I'm super excited. Let's check it out. So we are going to be walking through how to set up an ingress controller, specifically an Nginx ingress controller on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and then following that up with also installing a certificate manager and then a certificate issuer, specifically a cluster issuer resource so that we can automatically have a certificate manager issue certificates from an authority. In this case, let's encrypt. And then we'll walk through an actual demo uh, using uh, these resource objects that we've created. So for all of this, I'm just using Helm charts. In fact, all of the Helm charts are gonna be from what's called upstream Helm charts. You can go to GitHub, we'll zoom in here. You can go to github.com forward slash Helm, click on charts, go to the master stable branch, and we have quite a few different Helm charts. Or if you want something that's more GUI presentable, you can go to hub.kubapps.com, you can search for whatever chart you want. So for example, starting with our very first one, which is Nginx, you would search and find the Nginx ingress Helm chart. Now I already have the commands up that we're gonna need. So first, before we start pasting any commands, let's see what we have going on in our Kubernetes cluster. So zooming in again, I'm using a cluster that's called JDK82. I shouldn't have anything on this cluster. So we'll confirm. Uh, let me click on the right window. Uh, one more thing, just as a prerequisite before I start, I'm gonna be using kubectl or kubectl, pronunciation preference, totally up to you, whichever one you want. Uh, I'm gonna be using the binary, uh, but I've created an alias for it. So rather than typing kubectl get pods or kubectl get services, I just have the letter K. So we're gonna do K get pods. You can see I don't have any. K get services. I just have the standard default Kubernetes service. Uh, we'll do Helm LS to see if I have any Helm charts or Helm releases, which it doesn't look like I do. So I'll clear the screen. And now I'm just gonna copy this first command to set up our ingress controller. Paste that in down here and hit enter. Now this is gonna go through, it's gonna have to pull the image for the Nginx ingress controller. You can read more about what's going on over here on the right, uh, obviously on your own time. Uh, but we can also take a look, you can see everything that was kind of created. It gives you an example for how you would create an ingress resource. Um, if you scroll up, it tells you everything that it's creating, the deployment, the service, the role, cluster role binding. One of the nice things about Helm, for anyone who doesn't know, is Helm is the package manager for Kubernetes. So it's gonna deploy out a whole bunch of resource objects uh, at one time with one command. So let's go ahead and do k get pods again. And fantastic, I actually see the controller is already up and running. We can also do a really fun command if it weren't running and we'd wanna see where it's at in its deployment status, we could do k describe pod, uh, Nginx ingress controller. I'm just using tab for autocomplete and I hit enter. And you can actually see it started the container, created the container. It did have to pull the container image. Uh, and we can see when it did start the pull, it was able to pull quite quickly. Honestly, I've pulled it before and that's, that's why. If yours takes about five to six minutes, don't worry, that's completely normal. Just let it go and pull. So we're also gonna double check K get services. And fantastic, I do see that the service is still pending. So this can take another minute or two so that we get an actual IP address. And in the meantime, I'll actually just drag this over just a little bit so we can uh, have maybe something that's a little bit more appealing so we can get the cluster IP and do kget services one more time. And I do see that I now have an IP address. So it's really great that I now have a public IP address. This is backed behind a load balancer. I'm using Azure Kubernetes Service, or AKS for short. So the load balancer was created uh, per this Helm chart. 
So I can go and create a new tab, paste that in, and we should see a default backend 404 error because we're not serving any web content, right? And it's just hitting the front end of the default backend. It's not actually being directed anywhere. We'll give it a second to go ahead and load. Um, once it does, we're obviously going to also need to set up a DNS uh, record for it so that I can, and we'll zoom in here. So you can see default backend, right? So now I'm going to need to make sure that I point that IP address, this one right here. I need to point it to a record that can auto provision these wildcard certificates. It needs to hit something, right? So I have my Azure account pulled up over here and I actually have a DNS zone that I've pre-created, uh, specifically az.jessicadean.com. Now, jessicadean.com is actually registered with Google. And uh, through that register, I actually created a name service record and pointed my AZ subdomain to these name servers. So now my Azure DNS zone is actually handling anything for az.jessicadean.com. So in front of AZ, I can set a variety of different wildcard certificates. So you'll see right here, I do have one that's called demo. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one and we'll recreate it using the IP address that we just made for the new in ingress controller. So I'm going to go ahead and delete and hit yes. It says it could successfully deleted. So we'll go back to AZ. I don't see that anymore. So now starting from scratch, I'm going to go and sit, hit create a record. From there, I'm going to do again, still wild card. That means that anything that sits in front of demo.az, jessicadean.com is going to automatically be directed to whatever IP address I specify. So we'll do star.demo. I'm going to leave it as an A record. And then I'm going to say minutes. I'm actually going to change the TTL to five minutes just for easy demo purposes. We'll make sure that what is on my clipboard is correct. Paste that in and I'll hit OK. So now remember, it's just creating the record set, the A record, that anything that hits .demo.az.jessicadean.com is to go to this IP address, which we'll bring this now back over just a little bit. There we go. You can see that IP address is the same. We have 40.87.93.1. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. And the next thing we have to do is set up our certificate manager. This is what's going to actually manage the certificates from our certificate authority. And when it does need to renew certificates, it will. So I'm just going to paste that in and hit enter. Now it's going to give us again, just as the ingress controller gave us information, this is also going to spit out information as well. So if I scroll up just a little, and I'm actually going to zoom out just a little as well. There we go. Okay, so it does say the cert manager has been successfully deployed, but in order to begin issuing certificates, I will need to set up a cluster issuer or issuer resource, which is what I specified in the beginning. So I can start by creating either a staging issuer or a production. Staging will issue as many certificates as I want. They're not going to be genuine. They're just going to kind of be like fake interim certificates so I can make sure everything's working or as I do in my demos, where I have everything that's fully backed, SSL encrypted, a genuine certificate, because they're now free through Let's Encrypt, I can use a production issuer. So I'm going to do that in today's demo. I'll show you the difference between the two. Uh, one thing to note is that production certificates does have a limit uh, and do have to be renewed every 90 days. So that's one of the nice things the cert manager does. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down. I'm going to do K get pods again. And we should see our cert manager pod which I do, and there aren't any services or anything for it. It's really just a pod that's just sitting there monitoring everything on the cluster. So the next thing to do is to set up the certificate cluster issuer. And you can go actually read more about uh, cluster issuers. It gives you a link actually to go read the docs, which is kind of nifty. I'm using VS Code, so I just hit command click and it takes me to the link. So we'll let this load here real quick and we'll zoom in. And so you can see an example of a Let's Encrypt production certificate. 
It calls the Acme V2 Let's Encrypt URL. Uh, I have an example of both a staging URL, so you can see the difference there, which is Acme staging, or you can see, again, the production right there. Uh, the difference is primarily the name, so you can see the metadata name is production and production, or prod, and then in staging, I'm using staging, of course. Uh, you're welcome to use these files as well. Just please remember to update the email address because uh, otherwise you will not get any email notices. They will all come to me. And I ask that you do not do that. So now we're going to go back over to our guidance page, which is right here. And we're simply going to copy this command. Now I left the staging YAML so that if you're new, you can kind of get started and just keep playing with it. I'm going to paste that command in. First, I'm going to clear. Paste it in, and then I'm going to actually remove the staging part portion, and we'll just leave cluster issuer for today's demo, because I do want a fully backed Let's Encrypt certificate. So you can see right there, the cluster issuer was created, Let's Encrypt prod, just like I would get any other resource, pods, ingress, services, I can do that with cluster issues as well. So I'm going to do k get cluster issuers, hit enter, and I can see the let's encrypt prod issuer was created 17 seconds ago. Beautiful. So now the cluster is all ready to go, right? We have our ingress controller proxy, we have our certificate manager, and we have a cluster issuer that's all set up. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to use the Jenkins Helm chart, which for those of you who don't know, we're going to go ahead and find it over here, type in Jenkins. Again, all upstream, not doing anything fancy. This document kind of walks you through how to do a vanilla install, but it also gives you a whole bunch of different parameters. And so I do this in a bunch of my demos. I have a values file where I override quite a few of these resources, add in custom plugins, do everything like pretty all up as I would need for my demo. And I can build this server in as little as five minutes. So I'll show you how right now. Scrolling down, you'll see how I can do a Helm install command with the dash F uh, flag to reference a values file. So that's what I've done right here. And I have the values file. I'm going to copy this command here real quick. And I have the values file right here. I have a few different values files, so I had to get through the right one. So you'll notice that I have a, quite a few different overrides. I can override the master tag. The host name is really important. So notice that it's hitting that demo.az, jessicadean.com address. So it doesn't matter what's in front of it because we use that wildcard. Uh, scrolling down a little further, you see all the plugins that I'm setting up with it, script approval methods. And here's where stuff gets really important. We have ingress. So here's where I'm defining what needs to happen with the ingress, right? I tell it the ingress type of class, which is Nginx. Uh, I do want TLS, uh, Acme, enabled on the cluster. The cluster issuer I want it to look at is Let's Encrypt Prod and secure backends, let's go ahead and force HTTPS. Now for TLS, since I am doing secure certificates, it needs to store that information in a secret. So I give it a secret name and I tell it that TLS is for this particular host. So I make sure that this host matches the secret name and the host name itself. There's nothing else really fancy aside from RBAC. I let it know that RBAC or role-based access control is enabled on the cluster. I give it the service account name and any role reference information. You can read more about this stuff uh, on the RBAC website for Kubernetes or on the Kubernetes website under RBAC. So now we're going to go ahead and paste that command in. And just to, again, remind you of the command, we'll bring that over here. You can see the command right here. Go ahead and paste that in. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, this could take about five minutes. It does have to do quite a few things. This is actually a little bit more robust of a deployment than the other two we've done. It has to do a persistent volume claim. I'll bring this up so you can actually see. So it's setting up a persistent volume claim, an ingress, the secret. It's setting up, of course, the pod, the service, the service account. It's doing quite a few things here. That's super important. Uh, I didn't set a username or password, so default is admin. And to get the password, I would just copy this particular command which is really just a printf command for a kubectl command that's getting information that's deployed actually into my cluster. So I'll simply paste that command down here, and I can see that this is going to be the password. 
So I'll just copy that and save that. Now we'll lower this so we have a little bit more room to play with. And I'll split the screen. We're gonna do, uh, one of the things if you notice, I deployed this to a namespace called Live Demo. So any of my commands are gonna reference that namespace. So we'll go ahead and do k get pods and live demo. And you can see that it's in an initializing state, right? I told you it's gonna have to do quite a few things. You could again do k describe pod dash n live demo I'm using again tab for autocomplete. And I can see it's setting up volumes. It's doing quite a few things. So I'll do a watch kube cuddle command so we can just kind of see when that pod is ready. You'll see this change. In the meantime, we can run a few other commands. For example, we can run commands like uh, k get certificates. And I see that certificate was created one minute ago. I could do a k get, it's mm, another thing that it created, ingress, right? So I want ingress. I see that it created the ingress as well with the host. And then we're gonna do k get secrets. And I do see that the TLS secret was created as well. So everything that we need for the TLS part, the ingress part, everything we just showed you has been created, but we're waiting for the pod to start up. So as soon as the pod starts up, we'll go ahead and test it out. Okay, great. So I see that the pod is now in a ready state. I have one of one ready. So I should be able to go to walkthrough.demo.az.jessicadean.com. Let's go ahead and try it out. Hit enter. And it should be fully Let's Encrypt back. Let's go ahead and see. Great. So I zoom in here. You can see I do have the little lock. Clicking on it, connection secure. And when I click on, we'll go ahead and click on certificate and then zoom in. It is a valid Let's Encrypt certificate. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. We'll zoom in just a little bit here. And I'll type admin. And now I'm gonna paste, which is already on my clipboard, that password from earlier. Wonderful. And so now I'm all logged in and I can see, if you remember in my demo file, scrolling up just a little, I had quite a few plugins. One of them was Blue Ocean and I see Blue Ocean right here. But let's go ahead and see some of the other Plugins, we'll scroll down, go to manage plugins, installed. I see things like Artifactory. I see Blue Ocean, of course. I see GitHub pull request as part of the Git plugin, Kubernetes. Great, so everything's here, right? The deployment worked, everything's TLS backed, the DNS worked, and all I had to do were essentially these three steps. Now I only have to do it once, right? Because I prepped the cluster. So as long as what I'm using for my cluster is that ingress controller pointed to that namespace or a record, I'm good. I don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, of course, this can get a little bit more complex and complicated as you start getting into real world production scenarios. But if you're just new to getting started and you wanna play around, this is the best place to start. All right, so there you have it. Ingress controllers, proxy, load balancers, cert managers, cluster issuers, A record, DNS certificates, uh, or DNS with TLS certificates, pardon me, uh, all in 17 minutes. If this is gonna be your first time playing with Kubernetes, please feel free to tag me on Twitter. Uh, the handle's somewhere on the screen. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.